Hey gang, welcome back to the big board. You know, it's uh, interesting that when you sit down to a game and start uh, reading the rules and digging through it, you, uh, you, get, you, you, you garner or gather up an impression of how the rules will work, how it all play out, and uh, you know, you, you're kind of, it kind of builds slowly, builds a, this kind of preconceived notion of what the game's gonna be like. And uh, this game is no exception, and it's also uh, doubly so because this game is, is built on the back of and the bones or the skeleton of the next war from SBI, you know, which is a Dunnigan, uh, you know, Mark Herman design. And I think Herman wrote most of the rules, so uh, very, very, very good rule set you know, from the old system. Now, what are we doing? What, what are we doing here with this video? So, caveat: I've had to take a uh, a little bit of pain medicine because I've I've done something to my back and I, I can only uh, <laughs> I can only use one of my legs properly. So I'm kind of I'm kind of gimping around here a little bit and it's uh, a little uncomfortable. So who knows how long this video may go and who knows what may happen. But I thought I would recap the scenario and have a little talk about some of the, the, the rules that are, that are different, that, uh, that give this some uniqueness to it, uh, just even in a simple scenario like Chap One Charlie, which is what we're playing here, scenario one. So, okay, so the first thing here is planning is critical, right? The planning that you put into deciding who's gonna move first, uh, you know, come in on a, on a, on a given attack, right? If there was a unit here. Which unit is going to take the heat first up? Because as you move into a Zoc, you're going to have to attack. And uh, then, you know, how, how hard do you press? How many, how many movement points are you going to expend? Are you going to, you know, invoke a fatigue level to perhaps take that chance to get the appropriate result that you're looking for to soften up this particular unit? Or are you just going to, you know, move adjacent do a relatively standard attack and then move the next unit in and the next unit as the case may be such that you can build up uh, adjacent, you know, units adjacent, which give you combat modifiers. And I'm using the, using the term, <clears throat> using the term combat modifier because it's not a DRM. What we're doing is on the right, on the left hand side of the, uh, the table here, combat modifier, combat modifiers, right? So we started zero, and we're going to go up and down the scale based on the, um, you know, the, the the attacker and defender, and the way the rules are laid out, it actually gives. It, it's talking about how the defender will get a plus and the the attacker will get a plus, and you've got to make sure that you're giving the right plus to the right side. So you really do want to tally up both sides' numbers, and then subtract one from the other and kind of go for it from there. And then once you get this final number here, you're going to go across based on the odds from one to two to seven to one. And when you get over to seven to one. You know, that's when good things start to happen, but, but only if you've got a relatively good combat modifier. Even at seven to one, you can be at risk uh, in over half, no, no, that's not true. In one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of the possible 14 results, the combat modifier results, actually 15 uh, combat modifier results, uh, you, you, you as the attacker can incur an A1 result, which is not good, my friends. So, so uh, what happens though at greater than seven to one is we start applying extra benefit to the combat, modifi combat modifiers. So let's say I, I net it out at a two combat modifier. If I happen to have seven to one odds, but then I use air or an RT and something else and I bump those odds up to 10 to one, well, now I've gone from a two, I'm gonna bring that down, which is gonna bring it in favor 
of my of the of the attacker bring it down uh, I said seven and ten right so it'll bring it down three would that would bring it down to a minus one now let me show you the difference on a, a minus one I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see here and let me get the right row zero is this guy here so here if I look at uh, seven to one so zero minus one minus two let's just say it was minus two so zero to 15 i'm going to get the combat result d which is good that means the defender is going to be negatively impacted i only have a and then i cannot lose anything and i can uh, i only have a chance of a contact result four chances in 20 uh going through here actually 16 17 18, 19, 20, five chances in 20. so uh that's not too bad that's a you know uh, one one in five, right? I think. Uh, so, uh, but as I move up through this scale, I look at you know. So if I get down to here, what is that? That is a uh, that's a two. So even at just a two, one through twelve, I'm going to get a D result. Uh, 13 through 17, I'm going to get a C result, and then uh, an 18 through 20, I'm going to I'm going to lose steps, right? So it's really critical to get this these low level things, these low level combat modifiers, uh, zero minus one minus two minus three, whatever the case may be. And one of the ways you can do that is by uh, you know over over attacking. So it's kind of in, ingrained in my mind that I go, oh, if I've got max odds, I'm good. So I only need seven to one. So I'm going to go and, you know, get after it with that in that respect. And then maybe I'm going to apply some air and get some sort of, sort of DRM, right? That doesn't work here. So, so you've got to kind of let that go. And that's one of those preconce preconceived notions I was talking about earlier on. The other thing is this guy has... Uh, AA, so uh, a D-rated AA. So if I'm if I'm going to come in here and try and use ch use choppers or air to boost this attack beyond seven to one, one of the first things I want to do is conduct a seed attack, an SEAD attack, which is going to help me uh, reduce the the uh, or suppress the AA value of um, the the integral uh, air defenses of the enemy. So I may want to bring in an air unit or a chopper and hit this guy, suppress his AA. That means the follow-on air units that come in can, can uh, come in freely and not face uh, AA attacks. And I can tell you in this particular combat here, uh, or this particular uh, scenario, I lost two, uh, two steps of, um, I don't know where the other guy is, where'd he go? Uh, it doesn't matter, but uh, I lost two steps of uh, MI-24s, that's four victory points. That was the difference between a marginal and substantial victory for the Soviets. So that these things matter, right? So thinking through how am I gonna take on that hex? What can the enemy do to me? How can I react to that? What are my strengths and my capabilities, particularly as the Soviet player, because you have a, a, a wide range of uh, combat assault modes that you can choose for which each has a you know, basically a different movement cost, a different combat factor impact, and or a different uh, Loss, loss impact if you are unsuccessful. And you need to look at how critical is it for me to get those higher odds. So is it worth me risking taking double losses if I can take, if I can go in at 150% of strength using six movement points to crush this brigade that is in the way or should I just do a standard attack? Or should I just do something off the march and uh, actually attack at half strength? Because I know that uh, I can roll over this force fairly easily based on the odds and the combat modifiers. So all that kind of comes to play here in a, 
uh, you know, and it's not abstract. It's a uh, because each each combat modifier is really dealing with a specific nuance of the battlefield. So we're not we're not, and it's not complicated, right? But that's that's the cool thing about it is I'm not digging into am I using a 50 millimeter gun versus a 20 millimeter gun? We're not getting down at that level. At you know, it's four or eight or seven kilometer hexes, whatever they are that we're, we're dealing with here. We're, we're truly sticking at that operational scale and trying to understand what are the what are the combined arms capabilities of armor, air, uh, electronic warfare, chemical munitions, artillery, uh, uh, choppers, and then the style of combat, the mode of attack, the the. The discipline that is applied based on my doctrine, how is that going to affect what I do? And which is the best way for me to get after it in this particular instance, in this particular hex with these units? And so that really, for me, just felt very good. And in fact, Just by comparison, and, and there's certainly an element of inexperience uh, with my first play of the next war SBI, and I've only played it once. Uh, it took me two turns, maybe two and a half turns, to reduce um, to reduce Berlin, and I think you know. So 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 so. <laughs> Very different here because it was clearer to me what my choices were based on how the rules are written, and it was also more apparent as I as I got into the later movement of other units how I should attack, how I should position, who needed to be where, and all that sort of good stuff. So I thought I'd share that with you. We've wrapped this scenario up. I am now going to pack all this up and get it ready to ship to, uh, or move, take it with me. I'm going to New York in a week and a half, and we will be setting this up on on my way home in St. Louis and playing a scenario. And I'll try and take some pictures and do some video, but I obviously I won't be able to live stream unless I can fix my phone, which is a continual bugbear for me. But uh, rest assured, we will have a one or two map scenario with a couple hundred counters on the map and we'll be getting after it with the full air rules and all the rest of it and uh, digging into this uh, particularly interesting uh, little system here that uh, has enough nuance and uh, enough newness not to be the next war and to be its own thing under an iron sky. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks guys.